You know, the thing here is that six out of ten persons being trafficked on the continent are from Nigeria. And that's the alarming situation of what exactly is playing out when we look at trafficking of persons on the continent. But the, the, the talk now is about looking at the security situation, also having eyewitness accounts on today's program here on VSA. Welcome, I'm Suleiman. Well, ruthless, wicked, malicious, cynical, the adjectives that best describe human trafficking are endless. It is one of mankind's darkest businesses with great concentration in Africa for reasons that are as clear as day. Africa has some of the poorest countries in the world and uh, it is suffering from an age-long challenge of leadership. Many youth are jobless on the continent and a lot of people want to leave the improved lives. In the cause of uh, the desire for a better and greater life, adventures that are beyond the ordinary eyes are embarked upon. Many Africans never make it back from these journeys, and those who do are hardly the same again. Well, between 10,000 to 30,000 Nigerians uh, that are trafficked are pretty much uh, of this number make it to Italy. For prostitution, 94% of these girls come from southern Nigeria. Africans, some of whom are university graduates, die on the Mediterranean in attempts to cross uh, to Europe on the promise of traffickers. Futures get destroyed, families get shattered forever, and uh, for the bold, defiant journalists, it is an experience uh, with Delvery. Now, joining me on VSA today, uh, two experts, uh, meant to be three, Tobore Ovore, uh, can't uh, make it uh, owing to some emergency at the last minute, uh, hoping everything is uh, okay. Temi Tokwe, Oludo, a security expert in the UK, he joins me now. Then later on, Solomon Okodua, who is the Executive Director of Initiative for Youth Awareness, on migration, immigration development, and reintegration will be joining us. Uh, good to have you on the program today, uh, Temi Tokwe. Well, we hope uh, when Temi Tokwe comes on, the, the thing here is that we have people who have actually gone ahead uh, to see what this means by getting into, into the den of uh, these people who trade in humans just like themselves. So the enablers and the main actors in human trafficking at uh, some of the most influential Africans, albeit unknown to many people. So trafficking cartels and prostitution networks, cultural groups and many other organizations have been found to be behind human trafficking, but nothing is heard of their yeah, prosecution. We'll take a moment uh, to get this all sorted out because, uh, well, we are in an age of uh, the pandemic, pretty much everything is done uh, virtually. Uh, let's see what we can do to get this uh, so that we can get uh, straight on to our guest uh, on the program. That's when we'll return. Join us again. We'll make it as real as possible and uh, apologies uh, for all the glitch. Uh, finally, Temi Olodo is uh, live with me from the United Kingdom. Good to see you again on VSA. Thank you so much for having me. Well, one of the things that we have to deal with uh, in, a, in a pandemic uh, like this. Uh, initially, I thought you could hear me uh, because I could see you, but uh, somehow it turns out you just couldn't hear me for a bit there. Well, apologies. Yes. <laughs> and, and again, uh, the two other people, the eyewitnesses uh, that were meant to join us to also share their experiences, especially Tobore 
uh, who's uh, the investigative journalist uh, who's uh, gone into what we'll call the den of the traffickers, uh, isn't here today because of some uh, very pressing matters. But again, we'll soldier on with this. You know, the thing here, uh, Tamidok, but we've been trying to unravel how this happens. Uh, good thing you're an African, and this also should also worry you more, knowing that a lot of people that are being trafficked are from the continent, more so Nigeria. Uh, you know, in as much as we're trying to find a reason why people get trafficked, let's start looking at some of the things uh, security-wise that enables uh, this uh, to succeed. Uh, are there things that these countries on the continent should be doing to help, you know, stem the tide of human trafficking that we're not looking at at the moment? Yeah, there, there are lots of things that um, countries should be doing. Uh, we found that, for example, in the United Kingdom, they now have a policy called modern slavery. In recognition of the fact that it is slavery, whichever way you look at it, and it is a modern form of slavery, where individuals get passports, you know, they, uh, those individuals responsible for trafficking them, help them to secure those visas, and they enter into the country, sometimes legally through the borders, sometimes illegally, being facilitated. And what governments around the world are trying to do now, especially in the UK here, is to try and go after those people that are responsible for, for funding it, for facilitating that illegal, illegal modern slavery. What we could do uh, back home is to ensure that we educate, educate, educate our people about the dangers associated with human trafficking and try and speak to family and loved ones. The challenge we have is that we do not have a, a social uh, welfare net to help people who might be desperate. Because we, we need to understand whether we like it or not, there are different drivers to human trafficking. And some of those drivers are poverty, or one of the drivers is poverty. Mm -hmm. If people are, have, uh, if there's poverty, if there's lack of opportunity, people will want to take the easy route. And especially when there is this advertisement that uh, Europe or America or other countries around the world, you know, their grants are plated with gold. So more or less anybody will jump onto it. And I think we need to do more, both ways, both from the countries that are receiving these individuals that have been trafficked, trafficked and our host countries to make sure that this modern form of trafficking is eradicated. You know, again, one other thing here is uh, family values, uh, which uh, is... Uh some something that we must also discuss uh, knowing for all that uh once an average african uh would want a good name yeah. you know than seeking for you know the good things of life talking about yeah. what has actually gone wrong or to the extent that uh, there is uh, there seem to be an uh, erosion of that value system uh, today. What are we not doing right to ensuring that younger people and even parents can go back and, you know, start living that, you know, very pristine value which uh, were once there on the continent? I think when you talk about values, I look back and I look at it, you know, um, even though I was born in the UK, I had no reason why I should be in the UK initially because everything was good, you know. Back home, uh, our exchange rate was almost equal, you know, to the same price. People were, Nigerians were getting, coming into the UK with their Nigerian passport. You know, we're talking of just less than 20 years ago where Nigerians and travel to many parts of the world with their passport and return back home because life was good. But now we have a situation where over close to 90 million Nigerians are in extreme poverty. So the value, value that we put to life and we put to our culture has now been thrown out of the window. 
And as a result, people who want to get money or get comfortable whichever way they could. I've seen Nigerians with a degree living on the streets of London. They would rather prefer to live on the streets of London than return back to Nigeria. And I've actually been involved in those discussions as a former assistant director within UK Border Agency to talk to our people to say, come forward, put yourself forward. Let's talk about your prospect because you are much better going home you know, having a farm and building your life than living in the UK, jumping from one house to another, living in on 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 on, um, on heated houses, mm -hmm. not being able to eat a three square meal just because you want to be in Europe. So I, I think government also need to do a lot. And I've seen some TV channels, some media houses taking it upon themselves now to actually talk about the horrors and the flight of people, human trafficking, how individual human beings are being sold, you know, in Libya, and now how women are being raped, and how they die of test, you know, uh, in the desert of Libya. I think those kind of stories need to go out. And once we put up that counter narrative to, to explain to our people that, you know, this journey is not an easy journey, the way we think it is, I think we might be able to change at a mind. Mm. But when people are able to come here, being trafficked, whether traffic are paying for them, being paid a little token by their madam, and are able to build a house with it in Benin or in, in Sokoto or in, in, in Oyo State or in, in, in Jigawa, you'll find out that this will continue. But until we start to punish, because if you look at Nigeria, for example, how many people have we actually punished in uh, who are involved in human trafficking. Even internally, we have people now creating baby factories. That is a trafficking in its own internally. We have people taking your kids and sending them out to work on the age, you know, as housemaid. Those are the kind of things that we need to eradicate. And except we're able to put our house in order, it will be difficult for us to be able to project a better image of ourselves and the fact that we value our people. You know, Tamitakwa, you raise a very important point today, talking about the media showing documentaries, you know, clips and footages of people uh, who have been, you know, uh, subjected to some harrowing uh, experience on their way uh, to the promised land. But uh, do you think that is enough, knowing full well that even history uh, in times past has shown some of us, you and I, uh, you know, how the transatlantic slave trade uh, started. Uh, is it that people don't understand that slavery is slavery, irrespective of how uh, you've been transported from one part of the world to the other? I think people do not really fully appreciate the fact that they are under the bondage of slavery. Uh, I'll say this for free of charge. But uh, how many times uh, do you know of the Queen of the United Kingdom having an account in Nigeria? Do you know of the Prime Minister of any other Western country having an account in Nigeria? But if I ask you how many of our Nigerian leaders have an account in, in Europe, you know, you, you know that they, it, there is this thing about if you don't speak with an English accent, you have not arrived. When I came here, I made a conscious choice over 30 years ago that I want to be an African. Because I remember as a student of politics, it is, it is good to be Black. Whoever is not proud to be Black is not fit to leave. So I want to keep my African accent. And I kept it. And I, I'm, I make no apology for speaking like an African because that is what I am, and that is what we have seen with Ingozi, our director of uh, the World Trade Organization, showing that she can get to the top of, you know, the top of the uh, of, of the biggest organization, one of the multinational organization of government organization without changing an accent, even though she was trained in America. You know, so those are the kind of things that we need to look at. We look at our leaders wearing, you know, uh, Arsenal jersey where they have no association with such, they, they can't even promote their own local football. I, I know this is, these are controversial issues, but these are the kind of little, little things that lead to people also gravitating towards 
you know, I, I, had a, I had a friend that said, I don't mind, just help me to get into the UK and I don't mind washing dead body. This is a, a director within a civil service, you know, not minding the fact he just wants to live a better life. And those are the kind of issues. If our leaders start investing in our country and start making our people feel valued, value themselves, so that we can have our old Singapore in Nigeria, so that people can travel to Abuja and look at Abuja as a mini Paris. They'll travel to Ibadan. Uh, Paris as... Hello? To have a situation, who have a good situation at hand. Well, anyway, I think uh, you, you, you've actually expanded it, stretched it. Uh, but again, you know that, that you were once uh, with the uh, border security. Uh, the, the talk now is that there, there seem to be some kind of complicity uh, of the immigrations of various African countries in running, you know, this ring. Uh, how does this, you know, escape the eyes of the authority watching over, because it looks like the police is also a part of the ring? We have a situation where our, and I, I said this with all respect, that our, some of our security services are not fit for purpose. I had an opportunity of working in UK border agency for many years and getting up to the position of assistant director. I had the opportunity of getting involved in, you know, immigration enforcement activities and going into communities to speak to communities about a lot of things to do with securing UK border. And I did that as a British citizen. And I don't see that kind of, you know, energy in our immigration service. I don't see their energy to try and improve our immigration uh, service to make it fit for purpose, you know, and, and that, that, that baffles me. We, we, we are talking about an incident in Ibadan where a Nigerian, and uh, a person from the Republic of Niger walks on the street of Ibadan, caused havoc there that led to, you know, ethnic or kind of uh, reprisal within our own country, a foreigner coming into our country, which we call alien in Nigerian constitution. And yet, these aliens can walk around Nigeria and yet nobody can challenge them about their identity. You know, those are the kind of things that you don't see in, in, in other countries. You know, people come here. I, I, I was on a plane with, uh, with um, a, a white colleague who was telling me that he's coming to, the, to Nigeria to work in Nigeria. And the first question that was going through my mind is, how is he getting paid? I know that money has been transferred directly to our account. You can't try that in the UK. If you get two, three countries, contracts in the UK, and uh, those two or three contracts, you are paid. By the third time you are coming to the UK, they stop you at the border to ask you a question about whether you are coming to the UK to come and work. And they're checking it because they need all those tax to be paid by foreigners and anybody coming to that country. But Nigeria is free for all. We bring in foreigners, they come in, they make money in thousands, jobs that are meant to be for for Nigerians, you are giving it to foreigners, and then you are asking why are Nigerians checking out. And it looks as if Nigerian government is happy for Nigerians to check out because of the remittance that they are getting out of it. Because our remittance now is the second um, more or less um, revenue for government. Because if not for the millions that is coming in, or billions, if you want to call it that, from Nigerians in the diaspora, you know the economic situation will have been even worse than it is. Now, many of us are sending money to our family, you know, to build houses, to, to go to school, for, for them to be able to eat. Now, I'm not saying there's anything bad in that because I was in Israel, you know, and in, and in Israel, when I was in Israel, I saw what the diaspora were doing, building fast rail, uh, fast rail trains, investing. But in Nigeria, we are not investing our money. We are actually, we're not really investing... 70% of money, we are using it to feed our people. And we need to change our orientation. We need to change the way in which we're doing this. Human trafficking is a serious issue and it's a shame on our nation and we need to deal with it. And the only way to deal with it is not only to stop those people from going, but showing them that we can help 
them to be able to build their business, to be able to make something of their life, and to be able to be to be proud of being a Nigerian and not being a slave in Egypt. You know, going to go and clean somebody's bum in Egypt as a slave when you are a degree older. That should not be happening in, in 21st century. You know, Tamita, well, one of the things I, I, I picked listening to you is uh, you've been able to establish that uh, this has a first cause and uh, the exit point is very important. And we're talking about the, the country of exit. Uh, and it yes. comes to border security with, our, you know, porous borders across uh, many African countries, Nigeria inclusive. What can the government, you know, across countries of uh, the continent do to ensure that even when these people come to take, to buy humans, I really hate to use the word, to buy humans, they are being stopped, you know, at the borders from getting into Europe. I think there are a lot of things that we could do, very, 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 very simple initiatives that we could put in place. In the first instance, I don't know if we we'll ask your viewers right now to name five countries where human Nigerians have been trafficked to. They will tell you, even without being an immigration officer. So if we know the countries that Nigerians have been trafficked to, the question is, what has the immigration service done to put a flag on the fact that if you see young girls, you know, traveling to those countries or if you see somebody traveling to those countries or preparing documents for those countries, you can ask them simple questions like, what are you going to do in that country? You could stop people, even if they have a visa from leaving Nigeria, you can do that. But more importantly, we can even, the Filipinos are actually sending in the domestic helpers into countries around, uh, you, uh, you know, around, um, you know, um, in Europe and in Africa, nurses. But yeah, the, what they've done is they encourage those about those uh, countries, those countries that those uh, I mean those companies that have legitimate agencies to come and set up in in their country. So there's nothing wrong in us saying, okay, if you want people. We have people, not all Nigerians are educated to degree level. There might be people that are in the village that actually want to go and work, you know, as domestic uh, house help in other countries. As far as they're going there legitimately and their right is not being trampled upon and they are being recognized under the, the laws of those countries, there's nothing stopping them from going there and empowering themselves. I would not want to stop individuals like that, but let those Com let, let those companies come into Nigeria to set up their agency in Nigeria, pay tax in Nigeria, and give us, give our people proper contract so that they are protected from human trafficking. That is one way the Nigerian, the uh, Nigerian Ministry of Labor can work mm -hmm. in, the immigration can work there, the human trafficking agency can work on that, go to those countries and talk to the big agencies and say, do you want our people to come and work in your country? Come and take them, but give them proper contract. And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't have any problem. If you want to take them to come and work in security, there's a lot of Nigerians now working in Saudi Arabia or working in the in the in the Middle East as security or working in different sectors. They give them accommodation, they give them visa, they do give them visa for two years, legitimate. And they go there, they do what they want to do tax-free, and they come back. There are a lot of people that have approached me to come and say, come and work as a visiting professor in, in, in Saudi Arabia or those countries. Now, that won't make me a human, uh, uh, won't make me a modern slavery. It means I will have my terms and conditions and I'll be collecting my money in dollars without tax. A lot of people are doing it. What we're saying is that for the lower bottom, we need to put in place the appropriate checks, both at the immigration before exit and even within the country and even traveling to those countries where we know our people are going to to engage with their government mm -hmm. to say if you want our people to come let's have an exchange and our people could come and work you know in your country legitimately within your law and then there will be no problem with that so we'll take a moment when we come back we'll talk more about uh, the things uh, to be done uh to put in a stop to all of this vis-a-vis -vis uh, the country uh, of destination, what they also should be doing, as well as the embassies and consulates of uh, many African countries in Europe and America, 
what they also should do to help in stem the tide. That's when we come back. Human trafficking, organ trafficking is another big and ugly deal. Across Africa, Africans are known to be trafficked to nations like India, Pakistan, Turkey, Brazil. To do what? Sell their organs. Organs like the kidney, especially heart, lungs and others are sold in global markets of the darkest businesses. 10% of organ donations in the world are sourced from the black market. Now this business features prominent, uh, prominently uh, amongst people like doctors and even professionals uh, uh, and even the police. So according to the WHO, organ trafficking is a billion dollars per annum business. Organs of trafficked victims are harvested and they are given peanuts and pennies to live the rest of their lives in pain and near death. South Africa, Egypt, Mozambique and areas of conflict in Africa are the biggest victims of this trade. At least 7,000 kidneys are sold yearly. So migrants who flee from war in Africa are also victims. And this is where I bring in uh, Solomon Okodua, who is uh, the Executive Director Initiative for Youth Awareness on Migration, Immigration, Development and Reintegration. Uh, Solomon, good to have you join us. Uh, you are, you've been an advocate for this. Uh, tell us how this became an interest to you. Oh, thank you very much, Lord. And I want to thank you. I apologize for coming into the, to, to this program. I actually prepared for it. But the network, honestly, wasn't friendly. But thank God I'm going to this man. I come in any, 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 anyhow. Yes, in uh, trafficking in uh, in Epson, Nigeria, it became it became a uh, become a lead to this is a big business for people who are dealing with this uh, uh, this illicit trade. Now in uh, in Nigeria, not only in this city, I don't want to leave it uh, this is a case study. There are several cities in Nigeria who are whose this is, uh, citizens are actively involved in this uh, in this trade. It's a billion dollar trade annually in and uh, is uh, and actually it, it, it gives a lot of people as. This is what is called uh, expectation of victims and uh, this kind of uh, this expectation of uh, this uh, of, 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 of harvesting and we kept, we became this we became victim of this particular project because of the economic hardship that the system has found the, the people the, the, the citizens of this country have found themselves. Now look for example now the people in the there is the, there is the, there is the, the victims. In various schools in uh, in our society, for example, now at those states, I did that at those because as I, I was a, I was a, a senior social assistant to the at those governor on anti human trafficking. And by the virtue of my position, I moved around the city, I moved around the schools, and I noticed some several things because it gave them questionnaires and give us feedback. In the questionnaire, people will tell you, what are we going to give to our parents when we see others coming in with a lot of goodies from abroad? Now, when I tell them. There are, these are the anti and size of traffickers. When they come, they, will, they, will, they will flash you with a lot of goodies, with a lot, a lot of interesting things that will entice you into leaving your parents' house and going to Europe. And let me shock you a little, Mr. Solai. Now, a, 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 a lady from a, a, a lady from a state have a contact with a pastor in somewhere in a state. Now, she lives in Russia. I'm talking about the antis now so that will let you know the difference give us a background of what is happening and how to address it. Now, the lady lives in Russia. He has a daughter who is a pastor, a sister pastor in the particular church in the I don't want to mention the church. Now, and uh, another guy in Lagos who is also the Visa Marketeer. Now, what happened at last? The guy in the church convinced the choir member that yes, my daughter, my sister in the uh, whole Russia is going to do a very good thing for you when you get to Russia. This your voice is going to transform into a jelly voice. You are going to come to Nigeria and become the best singer. And you're going to walk in that place and bring your the big dollars and euro to your parents in Nigeria. Out of the first because it gives 
talk to you. This, uh, this salmon is coming from the two feet. The lady friends up with it. I told the pastor, I'm going to tell my mother, my, my mother about it. Just to cut the long story, the long story short, the pastor lie. The lady fall, a young girl fall in the beating. She was exploited. She was taken to Russia. And she was made to cost out the sum of 45,000 U.S. dollars. And let me shock you a little bit, a little, a little further. 45,000 U.S. dollars is, 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 in other words, you pay $90,000. Because when you are paying for that, when you are paying for that, you are paying for your life, you pay for accommodation, you pay for feeding, you pay for clothing, you pay for medication. All of this is put together. Is, the that you, is, 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 if you are paying $5, five, five dollars to a madam, you are paying $5 dollars as, 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 as for accommodation. That's how the girl pays the total, one, the total sum of uh, 45 U.S. dollars. And what happened to the girl at last? After the girl paid this 45 U.S. dollars, I'm saying in all of this so that you will know the pain, the agonies, this is going through whatever they are they, 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 that each week are gone. Now she got to Russia. The mother said, Why did you pay my daughter for five thousand dollars? And you don't you have not paid my money, my daughter money. How much was the money she promised to pay the mother? Because the mother paid the, and the she played the at the particular area that they call the fetish rule. She acted as a juju. She collected her public hair, she collected her fingernails, she collected everything that 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 belongs to this young girl. That was the role the lady played. And this young girl came from Edo, not in Edo State. Oh, Solomon, Solomon, Solomon. So, sorry, to, sorry to cut you there because uh, we have uh, another expert who is a uh, 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 security expert. He's going to weigh in on this. But before we bring in uh, Temitokwe, I want you to tell us how do they move? Because uh, you have also been able to go through some of those routes to speak to some of these people. How do they move, for instance, in a southern part of Nigeria, a dosage specifically, how does the journey begin, and how do they beat the eagle eye of security agents? Thank you very much, Lai. Uh, this, this, uh, this, this, uh, we, we have uh, a very, this is several routes from the uh, that will take you to it, uh, this in Libya. Now, uh, from the now you get to Sokoto. From Sokoto, it's like, they take you uh, from, uh, from Benin to Abuja. From Abuja, they will take you to the Kano. From Kano, they will take you straight to uh, Sokoto or Kasina. Any of the two, you get to Angadet anyhow. Now, when you get to the city of uh, this, the city they call Ilela. Now, when you get to the city of Ilela, you tell me Ilela will not connect you straight to the city of Angadet. So, why you how do, how do you be how do you be security? Every single passenger in every bus that is going to north, knowing fully where that these people are traveling to the country, the security agents take two thousand naira per person. Two two thousand naira immigration, non every uh, all, uh, all of them that is that you are seeing on the highway, including the and 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 the LA. If you are Kenyan, I'm telling you what is obtainable in our in our in our, in our, in our Nigerian routes. If you doubt, you take a you do a survey so, and so, do so, a, so, a, a, Solomon, a, so Solomon, yeah. you say the security agents on those routes they know well that these people are being trafficked. And they also, that, they also profit from that. One percent assurance. I tell you that they know that they, if, if, so. They give the driver, they give drivers the money. The driver will come down and say, "We have to ask a, a thin party in my vehicle. Ten are going to out of the country. This is their money." Let me you bring it. Let me, from, let me bring yeah. it. Temi Tokwa here. Well, just hold the line, uh, Solomon. This is getting very interesting, and I'm excited that you are still able to make uh, this program via phone. If uh, we just uh, since we couldn't make it via Zoom. Uh, uh, Temitokwe, you, you, you heard Solomon, and he was not here when you did say uh, there is some kind of uh, complicity uh, with security agents. And he's just uh, yeah. been spot on, specifically saying the amount that uh, is being charged per individual in a bus ride that is going out of Nigeria in this case. And... and so you see, one of the things that government could do, government is really serious, is really invest in NGOs, you know, by my brother over there that are really going to the grassroots to find out the kind of amount involved, the kind of people involved. Because just like I said, you know, you can't, a British girl can't just walk 
you know, 15 year old, 16 year old walk to the border with a passport and want to travel. Yes, they might have an American visa or have a visa to go to Thailand. But if that is an area where girls have been exploited, the immigration service will be pulling them aside. Forget it, you know. But in Nigeria, they turn the blind eyes because of the little money they are collecting. So we are more or less the enemy of our own self. And I've not heard of the Nigerian police, the Nigerian immigration service, setting up a tax force. Because what my brother is talking about is not something that is happen that happened just two weeks ago. It's something that's been happening for years. And yet none of the security agencies have actually done an expose of their own. It's, it's sad that we couldn't have your, 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 our sister join us to talk about it, about our experience, you know, on the cover. But you found that if, for example, the Nigerian police sets up its own internal investigation to look at the role of police in helping to facilitate trafficking and then call their people to order arrest some of their members, throw some of them there, there in jail, throw some of them out of the force. You'll find out that at the border, a lot of people will sit up and start doing the right thing. If the immigration does the same, the same will happen. But all our leaders are doing is playing lip service, collecting money for foreign donors who want to give money or give training or invite them abroad. But they are not internally doing anything to say, this is my sister that is going over there. It's better for her to be recruited officially and go there and go and work. But how can you, how could somebody go and sell their organ? Go back to Nigeria and become a body to Nigerian uh, health service. And yet you are happy for that to, go, to continue. You know, what have our government done to make sure that there are flags, even in that country, if we're unable to stop them. But if they come across our people with such situations, our embassy, people come and cry to them. What we through our organization, Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, are actually doing a lot mm. to bring back people or to help. So when you send emails, let, to let them, me, the let me, sorry, sorry to help you, uh, Tamita, but let me bring in Solomon again. Uh, Solomon. Uh, the thing here, I, I, I hope uh, my producers can put back that map, uh, you know, of the route from Egel to Agadez, which you also mentioned. At what point, Solomon, do they now finally get on the ship? Uh, is the journey by land or through, or uh, at what point do they get on the boat, you know, going to Europe? Thank you, Mr. Sulai. So, okay, from Agadez, that is, that was better to see the city of you have two options there. That is, that is what depends, the options now depends on how, how fat your pocket is. Hmm. Now, if you have a very good money, they will tell you, now you take a illus that will take you three days from Agadez to the city of, uh, let's say, say Gatron. The city of Gatron is the first city in the southern part of uh, Libya. When you get to Gatron, there's a Gatron, you take another bed, could have go to Sabah. When you get to Sabah, you get to get another bed, straight to Tripoli. All this, all this journey, you are not passing through the major, you are passing through the Bukhara Desert, straight to the major city. Now, when you get to the city of Tripoli, you will now go, you will sit down again, and understand if you have enough money with you, then you will now continue again straight to the city of uh, Zuara. Zuara or Mestrata are the two cities, the exit city from Libya. When you get to the city of Mestrata, there's a ship there that, will, that is waiting for you to, 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 that, that will, that is waiting for you to, to come. Now, if you get to the city of Zuara, the city of Zuara to the city of uh, La Padre, in uh, Sicily, it's about uh, one about, uh, about one hundred and forty-seven so kilometers from the city of Zuara in Libya to the city of uh, the, the first uh, city, uh, the first city in Italy called uh, Sicily or La Padre. So any of these two cities, you can get from either Bostraka or Libya. Now, when you get to that place, what happens? In a Guyana guys. That would as connect as working as agent to Libya, this uh, uh, navy. Now, when, they, when, when you call the house, when I, I'm not going to say you have a thousand dollars. They say no, we have a this a, a ship, a, a, a fishing trolley that will take about fifty or so. If you want to join that one, say no, or you want to join that one because you want to enter a VIP ship, you join to that one. When you pay, immediately you pay into that into that fishing trolley. You are paying into a ship that going to carry about one hundred fifty-five, one hundred fifty-six. Because in that in, in that boat, you are going to see you are seeing people that have uh, maybe 200 euro, 500 euro, 300 euro, and you have whatever 500 euro. 
So they collect all this money from all their own nationals. And what, look at what is happening there in the Sassoulan. Now, every year, Italian and European government gives 2, two billion euro or less, this is now even above, to secure the Mediterranean and give a uh, in, in, in through them and, and also the uh, Bodokan government. Now, the Libyan authority, what well, 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 the other is, the, 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 the Libyan coast guard, what do they do? They will now use that medicine and that part of money to buy boats, make sheep boats that will carry Africans. Now, if they are, if they are, if they are loading African people now, what, what do they do? They will know that, you, that, that for example, now, uh, somebody is coming with his wife and his family. They okay now, you, your wife, enter this boat. Then your family come to the next boat. So they will know that our three boats that, uh, that will be, that, that will see that will be so national, Nigeria, Eritrea, Malia, Senegalese, you know, all national. They will keep it in one particular boat. And then you see that about five, three boats will go, then two will be apprehended in the high sea. Just to show the whole wide world that they are working in the area of security in the high sea. It is, it is, a, it is a strategy for them to keep they have to keep the job in the progress and also to keep extracting the European Union from dealing with this one. So now, what do they need? What, what, what our advice to them is that take part of this money to the city, to the most endemic community in South Sahara State to address the, 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 the root cause instead of giving this money to the people that have never over the years, you know, uh, giving you a positive report. So these are the things. So, so, so from Solomon, Nigeria to that Sol place, Solomon yeah. again, sorry to cut to you because we're running out of time. In some of these countries you've named, uh, Italy, uh, you know, Spain, uh, we don't they have embassies of African countries in those places for these people to approach them when things uh, really go south? Well, well, immediately they get to the there's a, city, there's a place called No Mars Line in the high sea. When they get to the no, when they go, when they get to the no bus land, they give them to Raya, and then uh, the, 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 the man will ask them to call either CNN or BBC or Al Jazeera that we in turn call the patrol in that in, 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 in region. So uh, it may, upon your arrival, you don't have anything to say. Once you are once you are capturing you have all the boats in that place, everybody become a victim. Nobody is captured, nobody is captured. This is a compass reader at that time. So nobody is willing to tell who, where they are coming from. They don't know that they are coming from Libya. Finish. That is uh, what that is only thing they can tell the the Italian or the uh, European government. So, because so, what so, is it so, that so time Solomon, is, uh, to, Solomon to do you do you think from what you've highlighted and from what you've also seen uh, and experienced, do you think uh, the world or the continent can put a stop to the trafficking of persons from Africa? Yes, they can if they, are, if, if they help Nigeria or the, uh, the, uh, the South Sahara state to rebuild their infrastructure. Yes, it is possible because if we have a competitive you know, uh, uh, program that will, that, will, that, that, that will continue to spark the interest of the, uh, this, uh, African migrants, for example, who want to leave Nigeria now and say, ah, yeah, the job in this in Italy, is the paid job in Italy is equivalent to the paid job in Nigeria. So what, 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 what am I going to do? So that would be that the analysis. That, so if those money, we are going to continue to come back in when the issue of goes to Europe is that money, that billions you are giving now, they are doing now to Italian government or they are to uh, Moroccan government and uh, uh, what do they call uh, the Libyan government. Why don't you take this part of this money to sub saharan states, to Nigeria, to Idaho states, and help us to build infrastructure, help us to grow our agriculture, help us to grow our 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 industry, and see if people if people will believe in. People will not be living because if you see the rural and urban migration, they are the rural, rural and urban surge. If you, if, if you blow your mind, and from urban to professional uh, the, uh, the movement, it's also blow your mind. So we need to really work on this issue extensively. And if, if we can, Nigeria cannot do it alone. We must have the collaboration with foreign donors and foreign agencies. Honestly, this is the way to go. Going forward is for them to come to Nigeria and sit down with us, the way they are doing now, with country, with uh, IOM, with other, you know, uh, uh, other agencies, other stakeholders that are working in this project to identify key uh, cities who are the, 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 the most endemic cities in Nigeria and continue to you know, improve their infrastructure. That is, honestly, that is the way to go. Okay, um, Tamitakwe, let's close uh, with you on this. Uh, what else uh, can uh, the countries listening to Solomon they're giving us first-hand information of what, you know, uh, happens on those routes. What do you have to say? It, it's 
it's a serious issue. We are talking of um, a situation where 40 million people are, you know, trafficked around the world. You know, 150 billion uh, industry. So we're not going to get out of it, you know, just by just having talk. And that's why government needs to invest money. If government really care about its people, government needs to invest money into the issue of trafficking and addressing this issue of trafficking. And I believe that is the best way forward. Uh, well, Solomon uh, Okodua and uh, Temitoko Olodo, many thanks to you both. And now I just realized we will have to stay on this. Uh, in the weeks ahead, we'll have to revisit this, uh, get Solomon again, uh, and of course uh, bring on uh, Tobore, and of course uh, you, uh, uh, Temitoko, to join us again. This conversation must continue because it is actually deeper and darker than uh, we thought. Yeah. Human trafficking remains a weakness on the continent, and of course Africans dare the odds to face grave conditions on a daily basis. Unchecked, unheld and free, the enablers of human trafficking, the madams and the masters are still walking with their shoulders high on African streets. You heard Solomon there, there has to be an end and it begins with you, your home. Thank you very much for being such a nice company. I return again tomorrow. I'm Suleiman. Bye-bye.